and welcome everybody to lesson number 10 of the motion graphics beginners class today we're gonna to be talking about working with the text and importing other kind of uh, material from uh, uh, Gravit designer first of all as usual before we start please let me know if the audio level is uh, good enough if you can hear me properly I changed again my microphone, so this is another attempt. So I'll wait for you, okay, go, and I'll start. amazing so <coughs> excuse me let's start with um, importing actually different uh, kind of objects in a blender last time we've seen how to import uh, some vectors so let's uh, try to understand what's the difference between importing vectors and importing something slightly different um, so let me open a browser windows with gravit okay already have three different kind of objects this one and this one are vectors we don't need this one actually and this actually it's a vector but it's a vector with an image embedded so first of all how can you do something like this well let's copy this um, so ctrl d i copy that and then we select a photo or any image and uh, let's go with um, let's go with this and that's it so this is the fastest way to have an image inside a vector but if you have an image in any other software or even in this software but not inside so let's say that you have this and then you want this to go there you need to resize that exactly as you want and then you select the image copy so ctrl c then select the vector and then here instead of color fill you can choose texture fill and it will fill it with a random texture at this point you can paste and you will paste whatever it's in memory so you see the position that's not what we want let's say that we want uh, this to be visible inside not that we need this now, but I'm going to show you different things you can do. I'm going to also stretch it, even if it's not nice. So, and then copy like this again. I'll go here and again paste. And now you can see that you have that image inside this vector. Can you import this in Blender directly? Yes and no. And this is when it comes to a different file format. So first of all, normally we export something like this and when importing Blender, I'm going to show you so we can see all the different options we have. When we import in Blender, the classic SVG file, we're gonna have, let's just make it larger. We're gonna have this and we've seen this already a few times. But this is not an SVG standard file. So if I import this, I won't have this image in Blender. I will have just a black image or probably won't even import. So a way to avoid this, let's do it with this because I already did. It's when you go here in layers and you want to export, you select PNG as file format. Now PNG is not a vector format, is in fact a bitmap kind of format that means that they will lose all the vector information which is for example in this case what's the final vector it's all this control point here i can modify them like that while if i export it as png it will export just the image so first of all what's happened when i import a png in blender 
let's import the image with dollars inside as planes. Um, I don't remember if I already shown this. You want to activate this import. So if you go into the usual, oops, if you go into the usual, let me open another window and let's go into the preferences. And then I want to search for image as plane and activate it. If you don't have it active, just activate it now. And I don't need this anymore, but we'll leave it on for now. After that, you will have here in file in import this other thing, which lets you import any image. So any bitmap, not I'm talking about vectors, I'm talking about real images as a plane. So let's say that we want to import this. You're not going to see anything. It's a plane, it's a square plane, but you need to activate the material preview. And here it comes. But this is easy. It's a plane, so it's like four sides. The icon was square, so that's exactly what happens. But what if I want to import something like this? So it needs to be a PNG with a, um, with a mask, so with an alpha channel activated. When you export from here a file like this, automatically you have the cutout of the image. So let's say that you have any image and you want to cut out a part, for example, I'm going to, to check something else. Uh, libraries, okay, let's get this. For example, you have this one and you want to import just this as image, just this part without the background. You need to build a mask, a vector mask, and then have this inside the mask as I shown. In this way, you can have that part only. But let me show this, that it's a simpler uh, example. So file, import, image is plain, and here we have it. Now they look conceptually, you say, well, but why we cannot always use PNG? And there are multiple reasons. First of all, I'm going to show what does it mean that you imported the PNG file. It means that you don't have the simple material. Let's say here we have a simple material. We have just the usual parameter. With PNG, it means that I'm getting the color and the alpha too, of course, from the file. So I have an external file. That means that there's much, much more um, going on. And if you have only one image, it's fine. But if you have many, it's a, a big deal for the system. Plus, there is another thing. Let's go from the top. From the top, they look the same at this distance. But what's happening if I start zooming in? Well, as you can imagine, one, it's a vector, so it's not losing resolution, while the other one, you start seeing pixels. So you want to import in Blender a big enough image so you don't see pixels. The problem is that unless you know exactly what, what size is going to be the image, you need to import an image that most likely is going to be too big for what you need, so it will um, use more memory than uh, what it really uh, should be, because you're gonna scale down the image inside Blender, because maybe I wanted this size, so now I'm losing a lot of memory information that I could have used doing other stuff. So it doesn't scale well, it doesn't scale well, that, that's the, the main thing, plus it it uses the memory in a worse way, but still it's an option. Now, if you want to, to add some volume to this image, to the first one, some depth, if I go in, in solid mode or if I go in edit mode, you can see the problem. I can edit here anything about this shape because it's vector, while this one is just an image in a plane. It's basically an image mapped on a plane, so I cannot select any of the shape anymore. Okay, this is what happens if I modify this, which also means if I apply a solidify modifier here to get some depth and apply some modifier, same modifier here, that's what happens. Basically nothing. And there are a few glitches. We can correct those glitches 
and I'll show you how. First thing you want to do is go in here in option and remove show back face. And now it's still showing something weird. And the problem is simple. It's extruding only the border of the plane. It cannot extrude anything of this shape because there's nothing there. It's just an image mapped on to a, um, a plane. How can you mix the two things? Well, it's quite easy actually. If you have the shape, you export the shape as SVG, like this one, and then export the image as a plane, so as a PNG, and then you want to mix them, and also you need to align them. It's, it's not the easiest way to do, but it's doable. Sorry, I'll go from the top. Oops. you will realize that they are not exactly the same but let's let's make it happen okay mm. for some reason they are not exactly in the same position let's try to go with numbers and the scale to one and this also let's go I'm sorry guys, I just realized that I had the overlay on, still on, that's my fault because I'm not watching the stream real time. Okay, so I think we we'll, we start again from the exporting. Once we export from Gravit, now we'll go to Blender, so it's gonna be much easier. I'm very sorry about that. Ah, uh, okay, I need a second monitor, I guess, to see what's going on on the stream. Once we export from Gravit, hello John, hello Techno, and thank you guys for letting me know, I just received a notification, so <laughs> uh, these things happen in live, I think. So we are exporting a different kind of uh, format from Gravit. We'll now go to import on Blender and while we know this format, which is the standard one, we'll scale it up to, let's scale it by 10. And also I'll center it. So I'll select set origin and then I'll center the object. Then to import images uh, that are PNG, for example, uh, I'll go here in the preferences I, because you probably couldn't see that. And you want to add uh, the add-on to enable the add-on called import export import images as plain. So you only type images and it should show up. You just enable it here. We don't need it not right now. And once you enable it, you can import any kind of image. And I showed that earlier, if you import an image that it's like based on a square, it's not really a big deal, it's a square. Once you import an image that instead it's um, a different shape, like this cloud, the cloud with the, with the money on it, you want to Okay, first of all, you, you get this shape and it looks fine. Don't forget that if you go on another mode, you will see this. You need to enable the, the texture preview. But you already see this kind of perimeter. That means that if you go to edit this image, you only edit the vertex 
of the square you cannot add it here anymore and the reason is because it's not a vector import it's just an image import and also when you zoom in you lose a lot of resolution because again it's not a vector and of course you can import anything as png it's going to be heavier on the system and it's not going to be as as nice to edit if you want to do um further editing so another problem with vectors is that while you can solidify easily anything of course here for example we have the usual problem it's cool because we can fix it we'll we'll just um, let's convert it to mesh first um, oops convert to mesh then I solidify and then I'm gonna select everything hit del and limit to dissolve that's fixed so while this can be easily give given some depth with an image like that if I solidify I will get some weird result because basically it's only extruding it's adding depth to the bits that touch the perimeter here I have no information at all it's just a box this is just a box with an image on top so one thing you can do is for example mixing the two so let's say that you have the two one on top of the other and then you put this down that's not the best way there are more ways to do what I'm doing and then you have something like that but then you have multiple objects it just too complicated but I want to, to show that in theory you can you can edit um, if you are in 2d for example and you only have this kind of um, graphic you can still work with them you have to remember to move them around okay and then you can still animate this in the same identical way so when you want to import something like a cutout of an image like the astronaut that I was showing you you can do this uh, you can do that um, in this way so having some image is still possible even when you are working in uh, 2d inside a vector uh, program and let's import something else let me see if i download it yes i think so so let me import something like images plane like this one and let me put it back basically you can use an image as plane as a background this is a way and it's a easy way instead of using hdri that are used for um for 3d environment a flat image can be used for a um, 2d animation because you don't need to have um, such complicated system important you remember to always remove back face because sometimes you don't need it and also if you don't have an alpha channel the cloud has an alpha channel while this one has not so we can remove this and then you can still change the material if you want you can change the roughness so it becomes completely shiny if you go on the other side uh, another thing you can do is link the color this is something that i really suggest to do it to emission and this way the color it's always it's it's basically uh, gets stronger especially if you go here that it's like this the rendered preview and let's remove from here also this now this object it's always turned on okay that's the the thing it's like that light is turned on on this object if you remove this it becomes black same thing for the clouds you can well if you remove alpha or let's do one one thing at a time color in the mission so they are emitting color they are always flat lighted flat 
complete. And if you remove the alpha from the cloud, you will see this. Okay, so it's important to use alpha when you have alpha because the space, of course, has no alpha channel. So I have nothing to link. There's no shape, it's just a background. And if you want the cutout, you need the cutout that is done in a, a, in, a, in a software and is exported. So a classic PNG file with a transparent channel. What you can do with this kind of animation, it's of course, normally I would use something like this one to have some camera movement, for example, where I want the background to move slightly, but you can also move the clouds. We've seen already something like this previously. And if you want to have a real sense of perspective, you don't have to go to orthographic view, sorry. You don't have to be, stay in orthographic, but you want to be in a perspective view. And right now, let me hide everything again. If I zoom in with the camera, you can see that the clouds are moving in the scene. So it's a bit more realistic and you can achieve this moving, for example, the camera. Or moving the clouds, of course, you can animate the, the clouds, but for example, look at the space in between them here and how they are covering and showing more of the stars. While if I'm in a completely orthographic view, now I'm in orthographic view here, you can see top orthographic. If I zoom in, they stay the same. So this one, it's basically a real zoom while in perspective view, it's more like a dolly movement. Okay, and this is the first step. As I promised something a bit more um, interesting for this uh, uh, lesson, it's the lesson number number 10. I thought let's do something uh, slightly more interesting. And uh, we are actually going to be very close to the 4th of May. I thought to do something uh, themed. And let's start with, with text. So let's remove this, but we'll keep the background because it's um, it's the worst theme, so we'll keep it and we'll call it uh, background so we know what is it. I also going to leave it in this position. I don't want to I don't want to touch the background um, and have it moving around. So in order to do this, I don't want to select it. I can, for example, activate here this flag, which gives me this. And while this one just hide, if I still want to see, but I don't want to edit, I don't want to touch it, I just click the other one. So it's basically non-selectable. So I cannot select the background. Now it's there, but it's it's uh, it's not going to be uh, changed. Also, you can see a difference in the color between this and this. We 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 already seen why um, how these two modes behave, but basically here. I'm using this HDRI, which is just to work on the scene, while this one is the real preview. And this one at the moment is using the scene world, and the scene world is at the moment zero, and it's gray, but it's zero. While if I increase this, you see that also the, the image imported change, because I'm, I'm basically adding light. So at the moment, we just need something very, very flat. And let's see how to work with text, which is the second part of this uh, tutorial. The main thing is that, of course, you can import text, as you can see, as you have seen already, as vector from any software, from Gravit, you can import it as, image, as an image, but of course, you can also create text directly in here. And we're going to create text in here because it's it's the part that we haven't seen. You have seen already how to import stuff. You can import everything ready-made, but let's see how to make and edit text here. It's again quite easy. Let's go from the top because it's actually helpful seeing this from the top. I'm gonna hide the 3D cursor so we are not confused. We'll do add text and you have a text saying text. The first thing you want to do is 
press tab and the tab will show you the cursor and then you can just type whatever you want and so let's type something like the 4th of May okay it's there once you add this it's basically becoming a new shape you can see here text and you can type as much as you want you can you can type like in any other software and having most of the feature of any other um, software but let's let's start with the with the normal um, with the normal line just without multiple things here you have enabled now a new setting page and of course you have the usual alignment you have the character spacing you have anything that you can imagine in a normal software to do uh, text editing now the font it's important because normally blender comes with uh, this blender font and there's no other font so i cannot choose pick another font i have to load another font from the font of my system which is quite easy you press folder and i'm going to choose for this uh, a lesson a the franklin something i think it's this one yeah which is supposed to be the one using the star wars um opening titles and i'm going to copy here as text few random lines give me a second So I copied some text and then I'm passing some text here. Uh, it's very big, so that's not what I want to do. Probably I want to go next line and then I can probably go back with the cursor. I'm moving the cursor normally as you would move. If, you, if I show this, you can see that. If you can copy a paragraph with already the the returns it will go back but right now i'm doing this manually so i'm moving with the cursor this is the classic lorem ipsum text i just want a, a big chunk of text Okay, and actually I'm gonna change this because, because yes. And now that you have this text, probably you already imagine what I'm going to do. I think I want I want more shorter paragraph but longer text. So I'm going to actually split it a bit more. Uh, dummy text is okay we're almost done if you have the text ready from some other software we'll just copy and paste and we'll just uh, be right from the beginning okay i said that we have this text as any other spline or vector or a shape in a blender you can do exactly the same things so you have geometry here and one thing you can do even if we are working in 2d so we don't care but I, i'll actually show you that you can do it you can extrude the text that will get some depth you can offset that means that will get larger or thinner you can also offset in the opposite way and you can add a bevel which means that you'll get this round bits around it and you can combine the things so you can extrude it and then in the bevel only in the in the border and then you can just remove some of the bevel so it becomes smaller i'm offsetting negatively so it will become 
uh, each character will become smaller but then the bevel will uh, will add some uh, um, round to it well, let's say that we don't need that actually that strong bevel for this um, yeah but that that's the right the right thing and then we need next extrusion I just want a tiny yeah something like that and now we can do okay you see this is a glitch because I probably the offset wasn't working for this with the bevel so just remove it it's not a big deal for this idea for this um, example and then you can add a material as you can imagine I'm going for a yellow kind of material and if you stay from the top you want to move oops sorry hit the wrong button if you stay from the top you want to frame this as much as you can and then you select the text you probably rescale it and then you want to rotate it so we are gonna rotate this in 3d so I'm gonna press R and then X and it's rotating but it's not clear so what I need actually it's a camera let me create a camera and I go into the camera view I don't see anything that's not a big deal I'm going to lock to the camera view I just turn a little bit there's nothing visible oh here they are here they are so what I can do to get to the camera view fast is this and then I'll see what the camera is seeing that's the problem the camera it's it just in the wrong place so I can just move it in the right place like so you can move it with numbers if you prefer and then you can move this and go back to camera view and now while you have lock camera view you can zoom in zoom out until you have the right position you want the background to fill the whole frame now I remove this so I can zoom in in my screen and now I don't need the camera anymore so I'm gonna open a, a small camera view actually here somewhere mm, let me open a camera view here so we can have a small preview of what we are doing here mm. So I'm gonna here open a camera view so I have an idea of what's going on there and that's correct if you go in the render view that's exactly what's happening because this is just a color but it's still a passive color I'll show you in a moment what I mean if you keep looking at the camera preview while well, here I'll go into my 3d layout if I select the text it's yellow but there's no light in the scene so I need the text to become a light in order to do this I can let the text emit a color and I want the same color that it's here okay so now the text it's a light so it's visible in the dark at this point we can start let's go back here we don't need it so we have the camera there and we want to rotate this towards the camera so X The alternative is rotating the camera so it's exactly the same what you want to do it's up to you if you don't want to rotate the text you just need to rotate the camera oops sorry if you want to rotate the camera it will go from here it's easy 
but if you rotate the camera as you can see you're rotating also the background I'll show you how to fix it in a moment let's say that this is the, the angle that you prefer probably it's easier to edit the text this is the, the angle you prefer maybe a bit more and then okay let's say that this is roughly the, the final angle at this point we want this the background to fill so one way it's selecting the background so we have to re-enable the selection we can zoom it until it fills the frame you see the border of the frame is here the border of the frame is here let me enlarge this a little bit and we need to bring it more there also we can align the rotation of the camera with the rotation of this we can do this automatically but for now we just rotate until we have that something like this okay you can also check what's the right uh, rotation for example here the camera it's rotate 64 okay let's say round it to 64 and then we rotate this to 64 now they are uh, parallel so the camera is facing exactly that point once we've done this we really only have to uh, here you can see the preview and now I'm gonna I'm gonna well let me enlarge this a little bit so you can see what's going on So now the only thing you have to do is press G, press Y, and then you just move it. Now the text is disappearing in the plane. So one way to avoid this is, for example, moving the plane farther and then you want to move it down too so it will refill and then scale it okay and right now if you move it it will just disappear in the end of the frame and that's kind of it you only need to add your keyframe into different position so let's re-enable the timeline here just add the keyframe okay it's completely out of the way and then control i oh sorry no control just i and set location frame for the selected object then we can press auto key then we go i don't know how many seconds let's say again four seconds but it's a bit fast let's do eight seconds g y and move it out and then automatically add it the keyframe once you finish your operation don't forget to disable this or everything will be keyed by mistake and then you have your animation it's a bit fast you can slow it down depending on how much text you have but that's that's the concept now i assume that you don't want the acceleration you see that it starts very slow and then it slows down a lot you want this to be uniform so as usual you can select all the keyframes and change them to linear and you want to change them both the end and the beginning and now it goes like this let's go to the big window let's remove everything and let's remove this you don't need it anymore and let me I have this I don't want it and also I noticed that my background is slightly off so I'll just 
fix it. Uh, of course, you can render this as animation as usual, or you can just view that in, uh, in the viewport. If you're viewing this in the viewport, don't forget to uh, hide everything that is not useful. Now, the first thing I notice is that the the fact that the, the text has some depth, actually it's compromising the readability. So I'll show this because you may use it in other projects, but actually I don't think we need it. Uh, oh, sorry, not this one. This one is zero and this one is zero. So this is a real text, very flat text. And I'm not even sure that in the original there was a, a star um, a space image in the background. And actually it's a bit, bit strong. So I'll show you uh, another tip to make it uh, a bit and to change the, the image that you import in the scene. Um, so I'll introduce also other nodes. If you go to add, now I selected the background and this is the material of the background, which is the image, it's an unsplash photo. You can add to this uh, image node a bunch of different um, uh, modifier to, to the nodes, let's call it like that. And one you can add easily, it's the bright and contrast and you can make the background just darker and you want also to be in between the emission and the background so let, let me show let me show how it was the beginning this was the beginning and now i can Increase the contrast to remove the number of stars or just turn down the brightness and actually you can change some of the other parameter for example if you remove the specular it will become more like this maybe select it so image node to change what's going on in the image and then remove the specular because there's no no other um, light uh, going on here and I'm almost done with this I'm going to show you something else that it's probably uh, not in the real uh, opening titles but it's also something interesting I guess um, if I go in the timeline and while it goes I'll select the text and here in the image um, render option I enable bloom which will give you the a glow and you want to fine-tune this glow to have just a little glow around the letters for example so you want to reduce the radius let's stop so we can see what we're doing and maybe you want to increase the intensity then you have of course threshold and you can work a bit more on that but this will do so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We had a bit of a problem at the beginning of, <laughs> of the lessons with the overlay. If you have any question, this is the moment to ask for questions. And otherwise, I just wish you a great weekend. Stay safe, stay home, and, and we will have another round of lesson starting next week so i wait just for some questions if you have any and we'll take it from there Great. So there's no question. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Thank you so much for watching today, for the likes, for the patient, for the patience. And ciao. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You think it was finished, but I forgot to do something very important here.
select the text, hit tab, let's go down to the end of the text, let's go out of this, let me select the text and let me remove everything. now it makes much more sense i guess so i'll go here it's in the wrong position we can fix it we can fix it moving the camera a little bit then moving the background Let's move the camera again, select the background, move the background, I move the camera a bit too much, uh -huh. much better. The only thing I want to do, guys you can leave the channel if you want, really, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just joking at this time. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs> but don't forget to subscribe to this channel. <laughs>